Welcome to the Taya Practice Podcast, where you will learn an upgraded operating system for your life. And if you'd like to dive further into the Taya world, you can visit thetayapractice.com. That's the T Y A practice.com. You can search for the Taya Practice on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So subscribe to our channels and join the global community of Taya practitioners. When we respond from a really low vibrational space, I think we just kind of create more low vibrational experiences. We talk about that a lot in Taya, like where are you on your vibrational spiral? Um, and if you're feeling stuck and low, you know, don't take a lot of action from that space. Like do what you can do to let things settle, do what you can do to raise your vibration. And then from that higher vibrational space, then take action and you'll create a better outcome. Welcome to the Taya Practice Podcast. I am here today with 2021 graduate of Taya Bootcamp. We have a running theme here of bootcamp graduates, probably always will, and host of Rainbows or Circles on YouTube and her podcast where we met, Julie Malari. Hi, Julie. Hello. Good to see you. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, you came to our event in, uh, gosh, was that 2022? The beginning yep. of 2022 uh, in LA. Mm -hmm. So we met in person, and you you met the stream. I did, yes. You 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 extracted a very interesting conversation with the stream. I did. What did I say? <laughs> I remember because we have clips. We haven't posted a whole lot of those clips. I guess we should probably post should. Those clips at some point of this live interaction that we had with the stream. But the stream got into this weird territory with you of talking about if somebody came in and into this room and chopped your arm off, <laughs> you would be shocked. And I was just, I remember watching that back thinking that's a really interesting place where they went and you were so down for it. You weren't shocked by what they were offering, even though I, I think it was meant to be a little shocking and you were like, yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be cool if somebody chopped my arm off, but I totally understand that that's just a, an opinion. So I don't know if you remember that or not, but I, I remember that in watching the footage back that there was something about that interaction with you where they knew that you were just going to be completely cool with whatever they brought. <laughs> I do try to see from different perspectives. That's yeah. Well, and point. the point to all that was, is that everything that we judge is a learned judgment and something like that, of course, we judge as extreme and it's understandable in our, our vibe that we would judge that as extreme and, and frightening and probably physically painful, but the, this should not be piece of it is, is really a learned opinion and that we can take that open-minded appreciation for all things mindset and apply it to any and everything, even things that are, that we consider extreme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That actually brings to mind, um, one of your previous, uh, one of your previous, boot camp graduates who lost her son and how she was able to, how she was able to find, but not, you know, loving the situation, but appreciation for the situation and under like deep understanding that she was able to come to peace with what happened. Um, and after she did that, then the person who killed her son was brought to justice, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, after, a, I, I believe, a five-year uh, wait, when all the focus was on bringing this person to justice and justice wasn't happening, he wasn't being extradited, she couldn't take it anymore. She couldn't take being the victim's mother anymore and staying in that suffering space. And so she had listened to the podcast and she came to me to, to join boot camp. And I asked her, are you ready to find authentic appreciation for the murder of your son? And I knew that if she wasn't, I would know right away, like, what the hell are you talking about? She said, yes. So I knew that she knew what I meant by that. And to your point, it's not celebration. It's not something that you want, but it's moving through the, the journey of grief and the, in the suffering that I believe any parent would have in a scenario like that and arriving in a space of settling into appreciation for his journey that that was his manifested path as a human being. And from the source perspective of appreciation of all things, that was his path and that was his journey. And she brought herself to that place, which created 
immense healing for her. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not easy, but it's so incredibly healing when you can do it and get to that point. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've worked with it for a little while there in, in boot camp. That kind of became a brand for us. We, we were attracting other parents of tragedy, of, of children who tragically were, were killed or committed suicide. So I worked with a handful of people like that in that mm-hmm. period. And I saw the healing that took place when they came to, to terms with this. My, my child was a strand of, of source consciousness. My child is an eternal being here having a temporary experience as we all do and all are. And the judgment of how that was experienced or how the ending was manifested is a human created judgment. And I don't have to assign that judgment for the rest of my lifetime. I I can release the judgment around all of that and appreciate that this was what they manifested. This is how they expanded their consciousness and the having of that experience. And they even come to understand how they are expanding their consciousness and their having of the suffering experience of being the parent of a child Mm -hmm. that that met their demise in in a tragic way. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, which goes to goes to show that everything that we experience, like every challenge, every obstacle, is isn't is something that can happen to level us up and to expand us if we're willing to see it in that way. If we're like up to that challenge, yeah, and it all does. Everything that we experience is an experience of consciousness, an experience of expansion. And Mm -hmm. there's no such thing as good or bad, positive or negative in the energetic realm. Those are human created terms of our polarized environment where Mm -hmm. our opinion is the thing that lowers our vibration, not Mm -hmm. the event itself. The opinion of this should not be separates us from source because source does not have that opinion. And that creates our lower vibrational flow, which has a purpose. It's there to create the suffering experience. It's there to create more obstacles. And when we're fearing things that we don't want to happen, we're creating those things. And then we move into the experience of them. We expand. So it's, Mm -hmm. it's cool how it all, to me, I geek Mm -hmm. out on this stuff and it's, it's really cool how that expansion of consciousness is inevitable because of vibrational flow, because we're not static vibrationally, we're going up and down And we have this matrix that teaches us what we're supposed to, you know, like and not like. And when we have that opinion of not liking something, we suffer in that low vibration separation from source. And it's all good. There's no getting it wrong. But the the really cool thing is, and I think this is what rainbows or our circles is all about from being a guest and just knowing you, is that we can, though, however, move beyond all of that fear and judgment and start seeing the positive in everything and being more source aligned in everything that we do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like when we can shift our perspective, like we really like, I feel like that kind of opens us up to magical things happening. And actually it's funny that we're talking about this because I'm going, and, and this isn't always easy to do. Right. And I'm actually going through an experience right now with, um, my property manager, because I had a leak in the bathroom and the floors got damaged. They were totally soaked. Um, Somebody came in to like fix the floors. They pulled up the vinyl. It was soaked underneath, but instead of pulling up the flooring underneath the vinyl, they just kind of left it there to dry and didn't finish it. And it's been like a several week process of like telling, you know, waiting for them to come back to fix it, trying to communicate with the property manager, trying to communicate with the handyman and like four no shows on their part. Like, meanwhile, I've got like a potentially moldy bathroom floor and like, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. And I really had to try not to like go all the way down my spiral about how frustrating it is and how many hours I put into like waiting for them and and then being disappointed that they don't come. And um, it's at a point now where they're really trying to like fix it. And I've kind of hit my, at the moment, like the level of my patience has really like, I've hit a, I've hit a ceiling and I don't, I, they messaged me today and I'm not ready to message them back because I don't want to respond from a place of being really angry. So I'm waiting to just like 
raise my vibration, do some other things to not like get stuck in like the frustration. And when I'm feeling better, then I'll respond to their messages because when we respond from a really low vibrational space, I think we just kind of create more low vibrational experiences. We talk about that a lot in Taya, like, where are you on your vibrational spiral? Um, and if you're feeling stuck and low, you know, don't take a lot of action from that space. Like, do what you can do to let things settle, do what you can do to raise your vibration. And then from that higher vibrational space, then take action and you'll create a better outcome. I love that. That's very Taya, very, very Taya. So it's good. That you're, <laughs> it's interesting too, because I have a, a, a similar situation going on with the house that burned you know, sitting for six months untouched. Uh, mm. You're living in your situation, however. And I have to say, there's an in another interesting thing that popped into my mind is that is, is, this is your own place in San Francisco or Hawaii? San Francisco, yeah. San Francisco. I remember a time when you were wanting to manifest the place. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and because you didn't, you, you, you were displaced for, you weren't homeless, but you were displaced for a bit in San Francisco and you were wanting to manifest your own place there, which is not the easiest thing to do. It's a very pricey place to live. And now here you are in that place. So you raised the vibration and manifested the place. And now you've got the low vibrational flow of the obstacle that ar arises as a result of you having your own place. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> there's always like, yeah, which just goes to show that there's always ups and downs that we're going to experience, right? But sure. how can we best handle what we're going through and what comes up for us? And yeah, before when I was in boot camp, uh, my boyfriend at that time and I had broken up. So I was living at home and with my mom, which, you know, was great in a lot of ways, but I was like, I really, really want to have my own place. And I think that's what I talked about in our intro call was like, I really need my own place. And you're like, well, there's that vibration of need. <laughs> yeah. And, and you yeah. manifest it because you were, you were on a path when you graduated, you had the place available to, to, to go to. So you sort of accomplished what you did. You accomplished what you came in, one of the things you came in to accomplish. And now here you are two years out of boot camp still practicing and you're meeting your obstacle differently with this damage to the, to the bathroom. Yeah. And you're having yeah, the experience. You, yeah, totally. And the way I manifested this apartment actually was interesting because it was, you know, San Francisco is very expensive, but um, somehow I was able to find the studio. I was able because of COVID, because not a lot of people were moving into the city at the time, I was able to negotiate the price and have it be rent controlled because it's an older building. And so I got, and it's in my favorite neighborhood, like a block away from my favorite bakery. Um, and it just, it all worked out really pretty easily, actually. So all that appreciation for the place, and now it's bringing yourself to appreciate the bathroom situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, what am I going to learn in the process of dealing with this? And I, I feel like one of the things that is going to help like just level me up as a human being is learning to just really try to see it from the handyman's perspective because he no showed on me like three times and he just completely stopped responding to my messages he had my keys and i just felt really uncomfortable and i was like getting really frustrated and now i'm learning that you know he was going through some personal issues and i have to bring myself to a place where i'm like okay instead of being like, well, I got personal issues too. And I still can respond to people like, okay, that's not going to help the situation. Like, how can I just have a little bit more understanding around the situation around him and what he might've been going through and not respond in a way that isn't source aligned and isn't like the way that I want to be in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the most powerful tool is what would Jesus do? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's in my version is how would source view this? How mm. would source view this? Source is appreciation of all things, all things. Yeah. Source appreciates the flood. Source appreciates the mold. Source appreciates the flooring that's pulled up. So how do I authentically, authentically right. find appreciation for this? And for you, it's exploring what's showing up for you 
in this experience. One of the things that you touched on that I thought was interesting too, was the mold issue. So you've got a little fear around perhaps having some mold develop. So is it irrational to fear mold? Well, mold is, can make you really sick. So it's not irrational to fear mold, but is there something there? This is how I geek out on this stuff. Is there something there? I always go back to the story of the, the uh, gosh, January 6th. I'm going to have to get a new story. <laughs> this is so old now. The January 6th, 2021, in the insurrection, the riot, or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> that glorious day that we tried to take our government back. However you look at it, doesn't matter to me. Um, that, that sent me down my spiral. And, and when I caught myself down there and realized, gosh, I'm really DTS over this, that, sh- you know, why is this so important to me? And when I had an opportunity to step away from it, raise my vibe, like you mentioned earlier with the response, what was there for me? What did, what revealed itself to me in that lower vibrational experience? And I realized it's just like in the, the high vibration, that clarity that comes with high vibration, that need for justice. What is that? Why do I need justice? Why am I thinking that there's even a concept of justice that's real? What is that? So I just picked all that apart and explored it, realized I don't need justice. Everyone's just doing, you know, everyone is responding to this in accordance to their belief system. Why would that bother me when I'm all about belief systems? Understanding that everybody, the people that are cheering it on and and doing it are in a belief system where that is absolutely the right thing to do. And the people that are losing their minds, freaking out about it, For them, that is the right thing as well. So that revealed itself to me. So for you, it's, okay, what's popping up for me? And it may or may not be the mold. It may be other things. This is a personal journey for you. But what is popping up for me in this? What what is in my vibrational basement that is helping, that is guiding me to co-create this scenario of no response? The guy's got my keys. I feel uneasy. There could be mold you can kind of go in and start to really explore that stuff from that higher vibration, like you said, mm-hmm. and learn a lot. Um, so how do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like it's a good question that you you bring up for everybody else that's listening, but you do just that. Do I, do I have a, why, if I'm an abundant being, do I really need to fear mold? Mm-hmm. If I'm a safe being living in the city of San Francisco, do I really need to fear someone having the keys to my front door? Because yes, it's a possibility that you you could you know be broken into, you could be mugged, you, anything could happen, you know, in a city like that. But you are building or you are creating your own personal security system in believing in your own well being. First and foremost, that doesn't mean that you can't still lock your doors and set the alarm on your car and park under a light, you know, all, all of the, those things. I think the behaviors follow the the well-being behaviors follow the well-being vibe and it can mean setting your alarm and and doing all those things that's fine Mm -hmm. but when you dip into fear of some strange person having a key to your door and it's making you uneasy are you aligned with source in that moment if source is nothing but appreciation and source is nothing but abundance and well-being or are you separating yourself from that yeah You know, it's interesting because I don't actually feel like, I don't actually feel afraid for my safety, but I feel like I'm, I'm in that, this shouldn't be happening vibration. I'm in that, like, this shouldn't be taking so long. He shouldn't have flaked on me. This should have been taken care of like a lot sooner, even though I'm not, I'm not really afraid for my safety or well-being. It's more like the the judging, like the whole, this shouldn't yeah, be. Yeah, the should not be. That's powerful. And, and it definitely prolongs. The should not be is what's creating the prolonged experience. And we had to detune that with the house across the street. The, the interesting thing is, is our house burned down. We manifested uh, an amazing opportunity to rent the house directly in front of our house. There are mm-hmm. very few homes to rent out here in the desert that aren't short-term vacation rentals because that is so profitable out here. And to find a house that was available long-term in this this price and size range across the street it was incredible. What I mean, what an incredible manifestation. Well, you you, you manifested your, your dream apartment and then the downside is the bathroom issue and the landlord and all that. Well, we manifested our dream location, you know, considering the house burned down. And the downside is we're looking at our burnout house all the time. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's a daily reminder. I mean, the house has a construction fence built around it. You know, it's not burned to the ground. The front of the house looks fine. The back part of the house is what all burn. Um, so there's a construction fence around the house. And every once in a while, we'll get a you know nasty comment from the association. You know, when are you going to hurry up and rebuild this house and that sort of thing? But it's right in our face all the time. And I'm sure for a while, we had a vibe of this should not be. We shouldn't be waiting this long and what's going on with the insurance company. And now the insurance company has come through. Now it's the county and the permitting and welcome to California, you know, um, we're having to wait months to get a permit just to, to clean up the burnt down house. And the cleanup happened in December of last year. So yeah. <laughs> we're waiting for a permit to permit something that already took place, which is hilarious. You, you just have to laugh at it. Right. So yeah. it was like, well, the work's already kind of done. You might want to, you know, issue the permit for that now. So <laughs> But we're, it's still sitting there and it's still not moving. And I uh, am in the process of redesigning the house with the, the interior design firm that we hired. And I'm trying to make that fun. But every time I go, there's a little bit of that vibration of, okay, why am I bothering with this? You know, it's, nothing's happening. I can't get excited about it because nothing's happening. And that's something I've got to detune. And I know when I fully detune that, then the construction will start. But for you, it, it really is that sort of hippie mindset that we we take on of who cares? You know, the bathroom will be done when it's done. My house will get built back when it gets built back. Life is good. And that's the force <laughs> perspective. Those we hippies hippie had hippie. it right. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Also, like I, I tend to be that way a lot. And I think... Um, I think I'm afraid that people are, will take advantage of the fact that I am very easygoing. I feel like that's kind of what it is. Like I've been pretty lax about the whole thing until recently. And then when I finally got upset was when they started actually like, oh, we'll take care of this soon. But I don't like the fact that I had to get to that point of like being angry that they actually start doing something. You know what I mean? Well, you know, on the other hand, maybe dipping into your inner Karen and, <laughs> <laughs> going off on the manager, you know, maybe that's the experience. You know, it's yeah. all individual. It's all individual. So for you, this isn't wrong. You know, you're not doing Taya wrong. There's no wrong in Taya. Taya is let's explore why this, this energy is present and dip into it if we want to or not, and just see how we can move things along toward our preference, which, you know, my preference is to get the house built back. Yours is to get your bathroom back you know, to the way it was before or better, I'm sure. And so how do we, how do we accomplish that? I do think that there, there's no one size there other than the fact that I know that demonizing prolongs and I know that, you know, we're not static. So where is the energy and whatever's happening is a reflection of where the energy is. So there was something going on that created the scenario and maybe it was, there was something present where I'm being too nice. I need to step up my, my assertiveness, but you're not completely comfortable with your assertiveness. I'm just saying this is a possibility. I'm not saying this yeah. is what's happening. And maybe that's creating a little static in the vibration also. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think one of the things that I'm learning in this process is how can I be firm and assertive and very clear, but without like having to be, really angry yeah well ang ang going into nasty anger uh gosh i i can tap into that and have the nastiest temper i haven't in a long time but there was certainly a time in my life in my 30s and 40s where i could just lose it and i could be so cutting and nasty and awful if i wanted to be afterward i always felt like shit. i <laughs> always felt bad you know even if the person was was being an ass toward me and i gave it back to them I always felt awful afterward. It never made me feel good. I never felt like, oh, I got him. I was the winner in that argument. And I got my way very often. I knew how to get my way, but I never enjoyed getting my way through that nasty, low vibe anger. Yeah. It never, it was never satisfying to me ever. Yeah. So I don't bother going there anymore. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for people who can be very like firm and assertive and clear, but still be like very reasonable and level headed. 
So yeah, I think like, that's, that's, I a, that's a talent or a skill that you can develop for sure. Totally. Totally. And I think that's what this situation is asking me to do is like, is to level up my skills in that area. Yeah. I can be like that when I'm negotiating something, I can really take the emotion out of it, which is the mm -hmm. most powerful thing you can do when you're negotiating something. And anybody that's selling something, uh -huh. they are taught to play on emotions. They are absolutely taught to play on a mode. I've been in sales and sales training. I was in that for many, many years. And the, you know, you're taught to people buy emotionally typically, uh -huh. and you, you're taught to sort of get in that emotional window and, and, and ask for the sale and be very direct about it when they're at their most emotional point, because that's when they're going to give themselves permission to buy something. Oh, interesting. Powerful skill. Yeah. And it helps. It helped me though. When I, I, I sold things early on that I didn't believe in and I was not successful. And when I got into something I could really believe in and be excited about where I thought I was doing them a favor by selling it to them. Right. Authentically, I felt so much better about it and I was very successful doing that. I bet. Yeah. Well, why is it better to be unemotional when you're negotiating? <clears throat> When you're the, the seller negotiating and you need the sale, you're going to sabotage yourself every single time because uh, you've activated the vibration of need. You've gotten desperate and the person buying when I'm, when I'm the buyer and I feel like the salesperson is desperate to sell, yeah, I'm going to take advantage of that emotion that they're desperate to sell. I'm going to ask for a bigger discount. Yeah. And, I, you know, and some, there's times that I negotiate and there's times that I don't bother. But if I know that when that window of opportunity is there, if they're really desperate to get rid of something, I will because I know they need to make the sale. How low can I get it? Because they need to make, that's just a natural instinct that I have. But then there's other times where, gosh, if they're sort of nonchalant and the vibe is high and I'm really loving it, I don't care to negotiate. I'd rather just buy it and be done with it. So when you're, when you're, you're, you're not, you're not selling in your career. No, but well, you're I'm buying. So I sell alcohol on a plane. <laughs> yeah. And you probably don't earn commission on the alcohol you sell. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if the airlines paid flight attendants commission? Oh my <laughs> gosh, that would be a terrible thing. And then put cameras all over the plane and just see what happens. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that, like this whole idea of taking emotion out of something is what I've been actually practicing as I've been creating my YouTube channel. So I've pretty recently decided that I, I really wanted to have a strong, valuable YouTube channel that has, you know, I would love for it to thrive. It's still in the very much the beginning stages. And um, I think one of the biggest challenges about creating content and videos is in the beginning, especially like nobody's really watching and you kind of have to believe in yourself and keep going and keep creating content and keep getting better. Even when there's like no positive feedback from the outside world. And I've been learning that, you know, instead of being hurt or, you know, feeling badly or beating myself up that I'm not having a lot of views, if I take my emotion out of it and I can like watch my videos, look at my YouTube channel and just think like, okay, well, what's going well here? What needs, you know, what can I do better? What are other people doing that are engaging their audiences? If I can take my emotion out of it and just look at it objectively, like I'm going to have so much more success. But if I get too emotional about it, it's too hard. It's too, it, it hurts too much. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, you brought up a good point and it's, it's something I've been talking about a lot lately and it's, uh, it's called, I call it loving the game, loving the game of, of Taya. You know, I love the, everything that I'm ta we're talking about here. I love the game. I love sort of, okay, the house isn't, this isn't happening. What's the energetic uh, signature. I don't want to say reason because there's blame and, and, and fault and all of that. What's the energetic signature behind this not moving the way that I would prefer it to move? So that's the game. I love the game of figuring that energy out and seeing how things begin to, to move in the direction where I want it to move. Well, this is, it's an interesting thing that you brought up. And of course, very serendipitous that you're on as the guest this week, because something that I've started doing is loving the game of social media which I've okay. never really done. I've always, I, I when I first started out with the, the Stream of David podcast, I was on Instagram, 
I started growing Instagram very rapidly. I started meeting people from Instagram. People started, uh, most of my Taya Bootcamp uh, enrollees early on were all people that follow me on Instagram. So that was my place. And then I started branching out to other things. And then I kind of got into this <clears throat> sort of oddly ego-driven space of Taya and the stream or this sacred thing and I'm not going to pay attention to the rules of whatever's going on with the algorithm and how you're supposed to be successful. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just put it out there. And that really did work for me for a couple of years. I never blew up to hundreds of thousands or millions of followers on any of these social media platforms, but I had steady people coming into boot camp. I had people getting into Taya. Uh, I was having a lot of fun just doing it. Uh, you know, as far as my, my lifestyle, my lifestyle has always been supported by the universe, meaning the house I live in, the car I drive, the food I eat, the clothes I wear, the travel that I do has never changed. It has never faltered in all these years since, you know, leaving a mid six figure job. It's always been there for me. So I know the universe shows up for me. So why not just have fun with it? Well, now I have the book. I have the Taya practice book and I would like to get the book into the hands of lots of people that are aligned with it. And I want to reach more people with the message. <clears throat> and I realize that I need to not have that sort of ego driven, Oh, who cares attitude about social media. But I also don't want to dive into a need. Oh my gosh, I've got to hit X number of followers and I've got to do this. And I've got to what, because that would drive me crazy because every time I watch a video, or find myself watching a video because I don't seek this stuff out on how to be successful on XYZ platform. It's all, there's always some different message, different opinion, everybody, it's all voodoo science, you know, that they never, none of these platforms tell you what the algorithm rewards. You just have to figure it out and it's always changing. So do I use hashtags? Do I not, you know, do I, I need a hook at the first of the video. The video should be this long. I need to post yeah. it this time of day. It will drive me insane having that yeah. many specifics. So now it's like, okay, I don't want to be in that complacent space anymore of I'm just going to put it out. And if five people watch fine or 50 or 500, I want to do better, but I don't want to get into the vibration of need. So the sweet spot for me is fall in love with the game. I love that. Fall in love with the game of TikTok. And I'm really into TikTok right now because I get a lot of engagement on TikTok. I, I'm a consumer of TikTok. I just find it, you know, I'll have coffee in the morning. Michael has an early call on the weekday. So I'll jump on TikTok with my coffee outside. It's kind of like <laughs> reading the paper, you know, like flip through what's going on in the world. And the cool thing about TikTok is whatever you stop and look at, it's going to just give you a lot more of that. So in the beginning, it was, you know, dudes dancing with shirt off. And I'm like, <laughs> it's giving me what I'm watching. So I need to spend less time on this and more time, you know, watching something that might actually expand my consciousness a little more than, oh, that looks good. So, <laughs> Ooh, that guy's buff. Yeah. So now it's, it's a little bit of spiritual stuff. And it's uh, there's a couple of news people that I follow. I don't get in. It really is curated. And it's really that's why I like TikTok so much. It's so well curated for whatever you're interested in at the moment. And so I, I like the platform that much. Why not fall in love with the game of being a contributor on the platform? And so that's the way I, that's the approach that I'm taking. And all of these platforms now that I'm choosing to be on is fall in love with the game of, of noticing what's working and what's not and perfecting your craft on that platform. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I, I love that because I think I was similar to you in the sense that, you know, for a while I was like, oh, I'm just going to do this stuff and I'm going to create because I want to create and it doesn't matter how many people watch. But, um, you know, in the last couple months when I really decided I want to have a YouTube channel and I want it to be good and I want it to be really valuable for people and I want a lot of people to watch it. And I don't want to be in a place anymore where I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter because it does. It does matter to me. I would love for it to be a source of financial support for myself eventually. And um, it takes it, I had to like admit that to myself and not just pretend like it didn't matter because it does. And I think that's like one of the first steps in like, you know, going after a goal or creating something that, that you want. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say next. Um, but yeah, I love the idea of like falling in love with the game because if, if we can like, 
enjoy the process of it. And instead of like fearing when things aren't going to work out or, or fearing like the low number of views or fearing this and that, it's like, what if we just turn that around and, and instead of fearing it, like embraced it, like, oh, this is actually an opportunity for me to like get better and mm -hmm. to learn how other people are doing it, learn what's working, you know, bring more of myself forward, offer more value. Um, like, I feel like that's why we have goals in the first place, like why we have these dreams, because as we pursue something that's meaningful to us, we level up, we learn more, we um, get better at our craft, we hone our craft, we offer more value, and we keep just kind of leveling up and meeting our potential as human beings as we pursue our goals. If we didn't have goals, we would just be kind of like floating around and existing, I think. And it not yeah. necessarily like, not enjoying life, but I think it wouldn't be very fulfilling if we weren't growing and expanding as, as human beings. Yeah, well, that's why I, we we added intention as one of the four pillars of the Taya practice. And there are people that get into Taya, and, and I think uh, Carrie, who who works for me uh, and supports, <laughs> so, so supports all of the organization because I'm not an organized person uh, and all of this. She's a great example of someone who really is living the Taya life sort of allowing the universe just to, to deliver. And there's nothing wrong with that. She's not really terribly goal oriented and she's having her experience, but I see her move into different scenarios where she has her experience and sort of allowing it to, to, to take a span of time. And then she gets focused and gets sort of goal oriented and then it manifests instantaneously. But I love how much she loves the magic, but not everybody is wired that way. There are other people that are more type A, like yourself and, and me, where we kind of need that next thing. And really that intention is very broad because your intention can be just expansion in the process or your intention can be, what do I want to create next? What's my preference? And we're here creating no matter what. So the person that has no ambition, no drive, that wants to sit on the sofa and consume TikTok all day and a bag of chips, um, yeah, I'm not that person. I, I, I think I was that person as a child a little bit. But somebody that has no goals whatsoever and they just want to just be and just consume other people's stuff, they are creating also. Usually they're creating some sort of atrophy and they're going to create a health crisis for themselves mentally or physically or some combination of that just to create a disruption to that experience because we're not static beings. So no matter what you're creating. So the difference in having goals is that you are discerning a preference to create some new thing. And of course, it's a very high vibe, great feeling to create some new thing that expands consciousness for yourself and others. No better feeling than that. That's why there's so many. YouTube really changed the world because YouTube, I believe, came along before Facebook. And I'll never forget, I was at work. It was in the early 2000s. And there was this guy that, that worked for me. And he came to work one day and he said, my son showed me this thing. And it's so cool. It's called YouTube. And I remember, for some reason, I remember that. And it's like, you actually create content like what you watch on television. Looking back now, for those that are old enough to remember how things were before YouTube, that was quite revolutionary that normal people, quote unquote, would just be able to create content. And we have all of these stars now that came from YouTube, musical stars and, and everything else that you're, you're able to break down that barrier of Hollywood and getting an agent and getting a contract and all of that. And you can just start creating your own content and reaching out to the world. How, what a great time we live in to be able to do that because there were gatekeepers prior to that, that if you weren't picked up by a publisher, there was no such thing as self-publishing. If you weren't picked up, you know, by an agent, you weren't getting on television or in a movie for sure. So now all of this content is self-created and self-promoted and self-published. We have taken so much more control of the message. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there were before it was like, you know, there are a few people with the power to give voice to people, to give fame to people. And now it's like anybody with an internet connection and like a camera can create a YouTube channel and they can make it really good. And yeah. it's like, 
fame is now kind of democratized instead of just like limited to a few number of people. And that's a pretty incredible thing. It's definitely a very interesting time that we live in. And we're exposed to so many more create creative ideas and opinions and people from all over the world instead of just like, you know, a very small segment of people. Yeah. And I think it's actually stepped up uh, because television has gotten better than it's ever been. You know, te- TV shows now are, are, are better than movies, in my opinion, you know, like um, Succession. I watched the entire series of Succession. It was amazing, amazing acting. The script was incredible. The scenery, the, you know, they had to spend millions of dollars per episode. White Lotus is another one that was really, really good. So I don't watch a lot of television, but I notice that the television that I do watch is so much higher quality. And I think it's because they're in competition with the thing that I do turn to every evening. If I start my day with TikTok, I will end a lot of days on YouTube. I I have YouTube on my television. I go to YouTube first and just, you know, are any of the things that I follow on YouTube, is there any new content? And it's all over the place. It's car stuff. It's food stuff. It's a little spiritual stuff. You know, what am I consuming? I can go pick exactly what I want to consume. Yeah. Yeah. What a cool time to be alive. And that, and I believe (laughs) that all of that has created expansion of consciousness because people like me can quit their job and start a podcast and self publish a book. I'm not having to go to a publisher or an agent and saying, you know, what hoops do I need to jump through and how do I need to alter this message to get published? I can just put out what I put out and the people that resonate with it, find it and we get together and we create this amazing thing. And here we are. Yeah. Yeah, you can really find what resonates with you and the, the community and the people that resonate with you very easily now. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we've raised the vibe for your podcast and, and we've raised the vibe for your YouTube channel. This will be on YouTube also. So obviously we want you to subscribe and follow the Taya Practice and the Stream of David, but also go over and subscribe to Rainbows or Circles. Get more of delightful Julie Malari. <laughs> we covered how to pronounce her name because I think I always say Mallory. Uh, you know, I just get in, in my head, I see a name and, and internally I just pronounce it one way until I'm corrected. So I appreciate being corrected before this episode. Oh, yes. My and pleasure. So, so definitely follow her YouTube channel and listen to her podcast. Subscribe to the podcast. Thank and you. Get a lot yeah. more joy. I think um, I, I just wanted to reiterate what you said about like loving the game. And I just think that's a really good takeaway message for people. It's like, how can we love the game? How can we embrace obstacles? And also how can we like enjoy what it is that we're doing and creating without hammering away at it and dropping our vibration? Because we can create so much more, so much more efficiently and so much more of what we want when we are enjoying ourselves, when our vibration is high. And yeah, I think if we just do a little bit more of that, um, yeah, then because that's a creative easy. process that the, this, mm-hmm. this imaginary finish line that, that we, especially type a people tend to create that I've got to get this finished. I've got to get this done. Well, you're never done. You create something, you create your, your perfect apartment, and then you're going to create, uh, the, the lower vibrational experience of the bathroom getting flooded. And then you're going to recreate from there and rebuild from there. That's the universal process of creation. And we're never through with it. You know, I, I spent a year remodeling, quote unquote, the perfect house. Everything in that house was picked by me. Everything was brand new. It was done. I loved it. I thought it was beautiful. It was exactly the way that I wanted it. Michael was along for the ride. He loved it too. And then it burned down. And now we're recreating. And I have to tell you, we're not creating the same house that we created last year. We've hired a different set of interior designers. They have different ideas and it's going to be different. We didn't want to go right back into the same house that we did. We wanted to have a different experience with it. So now maybe it's just all about, you're supposed to pick out different flooring (laughs) and allow, allow it to manifest. I can't wait to hear what all you got from that experience because it's a yeah. great example. It is a great example. And I know it's going, we've shifted the energy just in this interaction around it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I, I just need to keep remembering like, okay, who and how do I want to be as I go through this challenging experience? Yeah. And you're, you're playing the game. And so now you can love the game of figuring out the sweet spot of getting the movement that you want to happen. Yeah. And that's, and you start doing that and you start segmenting your life and make that how you operate your life. Your whole life changes. Yeah. 
And well, the next time I folks. come here, what's that? I said, and that's Taya, folks. <laughs> and that's Taya, folks. <laughs> but the, yeah. the next time I come on here, I'll have a, I'll have a, uh, an ending to that story for you. I can't wait. I can't wait. So definitely message me and we'll have you back on. And uh, I look forward to joining you on Rainbows or Circles. Yay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for being on. Thank you all so much for listening. Hey, thanks for listening. And if you're enjoying this podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave a review wherever you're listening to this. Your feedback is very valuable to us and helps other people who may be looking for this type of information to find us. Thanks again for listening.